Hello, today we're going to talk about Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. In 1687, Newton published his famous work, The Principia, and in that book he first talked about his three laws of motion, but he also discussed his ideas on gravity. And rumor and legend has it that Newton was sitting underneath an apple tree and wondering why an apple fell and how that related to the fact that the moon was held in orbit around the earth and came up with some observations and some calculations to figure out that those two things were caused by the same idea, gravity. And Newton came up with an expression more of proportionality that the force of gravity between two objects is proportional to the product of their masses over the distance between them squared. We're going to use R to represent distance, but you could also see L or D. You usually don't see delta X because it's not a displacement, but those are the distances between them. So if you look at the apple, which is near the surface of the Earth, versus the moon, which is very far away, their R's are much different. So all Newton came up with was this proportionality. In 1789, a guy named Cavendish determined what the proportionality constant is to determine it and make it an equality. Here is the experiment that he did, as you can see, it's very complicated. And think about him doing this in 1789. Okay, that's pretty crazy thoughts here. But he had these two large balls, which were 350 pounds each. And these two smaller balls, which were 1.6 pounds each. And he held them close together and noticed that his pendulum turned and it was called a torsion pendulum. And lots of different calculations involved here. But from that, he was able to determine what made Fg actually equal to m1, m2 over r squared. And that was the proportionality constant g. Okay? Cavendish came up with a value that was within 1% of what the value that we use today is. And the value we use today is that g is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. And now we gotta look at our units. Newtons, because that's what we're gonna end up with because we're looking at a force. Meters squared, because we want to cancel out the meters squared from down here. Over kilogram squared, because we want to cancel out the masses here and here. Okay, so when you use this equation and you use g as a numerical value, you have to make sure that your distance is in meters and your mass is in kilograms. Okay, so we want our final value to be in newtons. Okay, this value you can tell is very, very small. You look up here at this exponent, negative 11. That's very tiny. So if you say you have one object or two objects, each with a mass of one kilogram, separated a distance of one meter apart, the force that attracts them between each other is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newtons. That is not a lot of newtons. Okay, They would be accelerating at very, very small rates toward each other, and that would only be if you're on a frictionless surface. If the surface has friction, there's no way that's being overcome by the force of gravity between the objects. Okay, But all objects that have mass both exert a gravitational field and are affected by other objects' gravitational fields. However, gravity is such a weak force, it is by far the weakest of the four fundamental forces, that we don't really experience gravity unless it's by a very, very massive object. Sorry about that. Um, such as the Earth, or the Sun, or the Moon, or some kind of celestial object such as that. Okay? But this is the equation that we will use and is now referred to as Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. In the past, we've said that Fg was equal to Mg. Okay, that's the, what we talk about here. We talk about uh, distances very close to the surface of a planet. And G is what we've referred to as the acceleration due to gravity, but it's also going to be referred to as the gravitational field strength. Okay? And the way that we can come up with that value is based on Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. So we have our two equations for Fg. We have Fg and we have Fg. 
No confusion there at all, right? The one we're used to is just m times, let's make it a little more general, a sub g, acceleration due to gravity. So now this will be on any planet, any moon, any surface, wherever. Okay, when we say that g is generally just for the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth. So let's make it a little more general. Equals g big M little m over r squared. Okay, and I'm going to use big M little m instead of m1 and m2 because it really lets you know that this is the mass of the massive object, and by massive I mean huge, and this is the one that's being affected. They're both being affected by the force of gravity, but look at this one as like maybe a person or a ball or a satellite or something like that, okay? So if you notice over here we have little m times ag equals big G, big M times little m over r squared. Well, what we can do is we can cancel out our little m's. And you can notice that the acceleration due to gravity, either on the surface of a planet, if we're talking about r being the radius of the planet, or some distance away from the surface of the planet, is equal to the universal gravitation constant times the mass of the planet over the distance from the center of the planet. Okay, that's one thing I did not mention earlier, is that r is always measured from the center of one object to the center of the other. Okay? That's the one thing you always have to keep in mind is that R is always from the centers. Alright, so there's one way you can determine the acceleration of gravity on various planets. Just plug in G, the mass of that planet, the distance from the center of that planet to wherever you're measuring, and from that you can determine what the acceleration of gravity is. The Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared, the Moon about 1.6. Okay, so that deals with the fact that the mass of the Moon is much less than the mass of the Earth and the radius is smaller, but not by as much of an extent. Thanks.